Picasso said to draw, you must close your eyes and sing. Welcome to Art with Barry. I'm Barry Foster. Today we're in the art studio and I'm going to be covering oil pastel basics with you. Here is an oil pastel and we really have Pablo Picasso to thank for these. They were invented around 1925, but in the late 40s, he partnered with Sennelier and they came up with the modern day pastels, oil pastels. Now I'm going to show you all the different types of pastels that we have. So, oil pastels are actually binder and pigment and they have an oil binder to them. Here are some brands that I have used. Caran d'Ache. Craypaw Specialist Artist Quality Oil Pastels. We have Craypaw Expressionist Extra Fine Quality Oil Pastels. I do have some Sennelier's. I have Low Cornell Oil Pastels. I have Pentel Oil Pastels. Here I have Whole Bean Oil Pastels. And these last two are different, a little bit different because they are water soluble oil pastels and these are portfolio series and here we have mungio uh, water soluble oil pastels oh. i almost forgot i wanted to point out Oil pastels are not compatible with chalk pastels or French pastels. They are very compatible with oil paints. Here are some other materials that I want to touch on with you. Oil pastels can be applied to almost any surface. Here I have Canson watercolor artboards. I also have Strathmore canvas paper. Here's some gesso, and I wanted to touch on this. If you apply, um, if you want to use wood as your base, then you're going to want to put several coats of gesso on top of it and let it dry first. Another thing you'll find helpful is odorless paint thinner. It's not necessary, but I'm just going over all these items for you. We have uh, wet wipes, baby wipes. Hmm, we also have, I also have a scraper. You can use anything to scrape with. You can use a grapefruit knife, you can use a credit card. Here I have just a plain plastic palette knife paper towels, and also I wanted to mention if you paint with oil pastels outdoors, you're going to want to keep them in their own um, ice bucket, their own cooler, and you don't want to use that cooler for anything else. And so um, when, when you go outside, these are a lot like crayons, and so when it's warm outside, they tend to melt, so you want to keep them cool when you're outdoor painting. Over here I'm going to demo a simple red apple in whole bean oil pastels. Now there are four common methods of application and um, oil pastels are probably the least popular of all the art supplies. I think it's because they're the least uh, well known. 
Um, I think people are afraid of them to some extent. But they're actually quite simple. You can use them just like crayons. Remember when you were a child coloring in the coloring, those coloring books? It's the same thing. You can use them just like that. You don't need anything else with them. You can blend them dry. And when you blend, you can either use your fingers, you can use a paper towel, um, a blending stomp. I don't have one here today. Blending is fun. It can be messy. That's why we have the baby wipes. We can also layer and scrape. And one of the things you can do is underneath you can put a coat of one color and then you can apply another color on top. And then later on, you can scrape out the top color, and the color that's underneath will shine through. And that's a really nice effect. The last method is blending wet. And because I have, these are oil, oil pastels, they're not water soluble, I have put some um, odorless paint thinner in a little jar, and I do have a paintbrush here an oil paintbrush. I'm going to show you how easy it is to blend. If we had, if we were working in water-soluble oil pastels, then I would have had a, had a little bit of water in there instead. So now let's get started. Before I start demoing, I think it's important to touch on the color wheel. I'm going to be demoing an apple with the three primary colors, which are red, blue, and yellow. The nice thing about the primaries is they blend well with the colors next to them. So it's always a safe bet to use those colors when you're blending. Here I have the secondary colors. And Opposites on the color wheel don't blend well together. They actually neutralize each other. So if you want to neutralize a very bright color, what you would do is you would always add the complement or the opposite on the color wheel. I prefer to paint with bright colors. So I like painting, I like using colors next to each other on the color wheel. So I just wanted to mention that before we start demoing. Okay, so let's get started. Here I have a red, a blue, and yellow. These are whole bean oil pastels. And I also have a bit of paper towel in my hand because as you're applying the oil pastels, they pick up the color of the stuff that's already on the canvas next to it. So you have to wipe them a lot. And it's messy, but that's half the fun of it. So here I've got red. I've done my circle in red for my apple, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually put my yellow in first. So underneath, when it scrapes, what you want to do is you've got to put quite a bit on there, and you're better off going back and forth a lot rather than pressing down hard. That's my recommendation. So we've got some yellow here. I'm going to put some more red around it. See how it starts out light? And the more you go over it, the more pigment goes over it. And let me get a little more red, or sorry, yellow in here where the light is. I'm starting to pick up those colors. You can see now where it's blending on its own, and that's kind of fun. That's the beauty of it. Now, because the light is more on top, the part that's underneath is darker, and there's a lot of blue in there. So I'm going to put down some red in that apple. I'm also going to put down some blue. Here we've got some blue. Almost turns it a purple. And again, these colors are next to each other on 
the primary color wheel. Actually, yeah. So um, you've got a nice, nice effect here. And I just go back and forth. Now I'm going to pick up some other reds. I've got a brighter red and a deeper red here. You really want to make, put a lot of different colors in there. A lot of different reds. You want to go over that yellow. starting to come in. It's starting to come in. Now I'm applying this upright. You can do this flat on the tabletop. You don't need an easel. And if you don't really have an art studio, like most artists do not, what you can do is you can work at a kitchen table. You can even work on your lap if you don't have a table to work on. Just a chair. I'm going to pick up another yellow here. I've got, let's see, I've got one that's a little lighter. I find yellow to be a magical color, and I'll tell you why. When you add yellow on top of another color, it brings life to it. So when someone asks me as a painter what my favorite color is, I have a hard time telling them. But boy, yellow is one of my top favorites. So we've got... indentation. We're going to do some more red here. I've got to steady my canvas. Uh, the nice thing about apples is no two are alike. So it doesn't matter if your apple doesn't look like mine or your friend's apples or even the apple that's sitting on your dining room table. Let me get a little more yellow. And then we're going to do some more blue. We're going to add a lot more blue on the bottom. Put these down. And at some point, you're going to feel the layers on top of one another. And that's kind of fun. That's kind of fun. Back with my red. There's a lot of light on in the art studio, which is warming up the air temperature. And when the air temperature is a little warmer, they, um, they come on a little smoother, a little easier. Here we're picking up other colors. Let's see. So I mentioned earlier there are four common methods of application. The first one was use them just like crayons, and that's what I've done here. Now I'm not going to take all the time today to do the background, but you can see I have it started. One of the things I want to mention is in this little shadow, shadows are always reflection of the object itself. The, this is a cast shadow. 
And so I'm putting some of the red in there because it is a reflection of the apple itself. But right now, all I have done is I've used my oil pastels just like crayons. I am going to show you the second method now, which is blending. You can blend with your fingers. And the heat of your fingers, boy, and it, it really blends those colors together. What you're move, doing is you're moving this pigment around. The next method I mentioned was scraping. Here's my scraper. So we have the colors underneath. So you, what you have is, this is kind of fun because it adds a lot of texture. Here I've got an area that it kind of looks like a big worm, that big blue. So I'm going to break it up just a little bit. You can always go back on top with more oil pastel. So here I've broken that up a little bit. There's the scraping. The last method we're doing is blending wet. So I'm dipping my brush and you're it's almost like moving the pigment around. at this point, if you are not working on canvas or canvas paper, let's say you're working on watercolor paper or some other form of art paper, you want to make sure the paper is very, very thick before you do this method. Because with this paint thinner, it can actually eat your paper. things I'd like to do at this point is put the stem in. I feel like it needs a stem and so um, you can always go back and forth. So let's see, we've got, we've got a little stem we'll put in there. So with all those techniques, it's really a work in prog progress. And so we've got the stem there. If you wanted to go back on top with your, there, there, just a little bit there. And we've got, we've got our apple. One of the things that I do, which my students find very helpful is, I have a sheet that I give everybody in the, the beginning of the art class. And what this does is this is a piece of canvas paper and I have six apples drawn on it. And what I encourage my students to do is they take the three colors of different brands and what they do is they make notes and they do different techniques on it and then we all compare notes and if you are in an art league perhaps um, you have funds available where you could buy six different brands of oil pastels and experiment and this is great fun I love doing this and now here is my sheet from when I did this at my last oil pastel class. And you can see all my apples. 
Here I used low Cornell whole bean, cray paw. Um, I've got Sennelier's portfolio water soluble and Artist Loft water soluble. I guess I didn't have those out today. Anyways, I made my notes and um, it was great fun. Um, again, one of the things I encourage you to do is to purchase the best set, if you're doing this at home, purchase the best set that you can afford and then just add as colors, um, as you use colors up. I encourage you to have fun and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.